Have you ever gotten into an argument with someone and just wished there was a better way to handle it? I know we've all been in those shoots, right? But did you ever think cryptocurrency might be an interesting and innovative way to handle this age old problem of human conflict? Well, we're gonna dive into that in this video. We're gonna tackle a brand new innovative cryptocurrency that's just days old that's trying to do exactly that. Now, if we're first meeting, my name is Wes Spencer. I'm a technologist. I'm a cybersecurity executive. I've advised Fortune 500s all the way to startups. I'm currently running a multi-million dollar startup. So if you would like to see more of these videos, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, mash them, smash them. Really important for me to keep these videos going. So let's dive right in. So today we're going to be looking at Aragon Core. Now this is a really interesting cryptocurrency that's all about dispute handling and dispute resolution. See, anytime we deal with some kind of dispute, there's naturally going to occur a need for human peer analysis and peers to sort of serve as an intermediary to make a judgment call. I mean, this is normal. We've seen this all the way from trials to just normal dispute handling that we deal with, maybe even in, in home matters, right? So we know that this is the case. So here's how this works. Jurors are going to stake a cryptocurrency called ANJ, and this gives them the chance to be drafted into a dispute. And by the way, when they get drafted into a dispute, they have the opportunity to earn fees and income by participating in a dispute. Now, I really think Aragon Court is pretty interesting. It's got a lot of potential use cases that I can see. So for example, think about like Fiverr or eBay, for example. In the normal course of buying and selling goods and services, disputes naturally come up all the time. Anybody that's been involved in any kind of online marketplace like that knows disputes happen and happen often. Shoot, maybe even YouTube, we have disputes around copyrights and takedowns and strikes, those sorts of things. There's always a need for some kind of peer analysis that can be involved inside of a dispute. So I think Aragon Court actually has their finger on the pulse of something that's a pretty useful idea here, if only it could be operationalized and used in an easy way. So let's dive in a little bit more into the details and just see more about how all of this works. So Aragon Courts is under the umbrella of Aragon itself. Now there's about 301 jurors involved and over a million US dollar equivalent of ANJ that's been staked into this system. So there is some activity that's been running around in all of this, but right now we're in a test bed of sorts with ANJ just because this is brand new. In fact, this cryptocurrency is actually just days old. It's not even a week old at the time of this video. So I don't expect there to be heavy adoption yet, but because it's running under Aragon, and I'll have a link down below in the description if you want to read more about what Aragon is doing around distributed apps, but I do think that this is something that does have the potential to gain some adoption, although it is brand new and we still don't see full use cases panning out quite yet. Okay, so when's the last time anyone was ever excited about jury duty, right? I mean, that's not a fun situation for anybody normally. If I get like a jury summons, I'm doing everything I can possibly to get out of it. I mean, right away. I guess outside of like maybe Toby getting the Scranton Strangler case, uh, no one's really very pumped about being a member of a jury. In the case of Aragon Court, so it's a lot different because you see a juror is actually awarded additional A and J when they successfully go through some kind of dispute. And I'll talk more about how that works in just a minute, but just know that there's some benefits of being a juror, which is why I would want to stake crypto and try to get drafted in in the first place. So to set the scene on just how all of this works, let's just use a scenario, all right? Let's say you have Bob and Alice at work, and let's say Bob decides, maybe he's some kind of owner in the company, and he decides he's gonna take some extra money home this, this month. And so he makes a request into the company saying, hey, at the end of the month, I'm gonna take in X number of dollars. Let's say Alice gets word of this. She's also a co-owner in the company, and she says, no, no, you're not. That's not fair at all, okay? We have a dispute on our hands. And let's say that they're going to use Aragon Courts to handle this dispute. Now, if you're like me, and I know what you're thinking, why go through Aragon Courts to handle this dispute? I mean, why not just a good old-fashioned argument, or better yet, some kind of trial by combat, right? That'd be a lot more spectacular. Of course, that would be interesting. And it's a really good thought. We're gonna dive in at the end of this video where and why I think Aragon Courts could actually have a use inside of all of this. But for now, just keep that Alice and Bob argument in the back of your mind as we talk about this dispute and then look at how Aragon Courts would actually handle this from a dispute resolution perspective. So now we have a dispute. 
And let's say you've been successfully added in or drafted as a juror. Yay, congrats. Now, how did that happen? Well, quite literally, you buy yourself into it. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out because it actually makes sense when you think about all the details with this. See, with Aragon Courts, the ability for you to get drafted in is directly proportional to the amount of ANJ that you stake into the system. In other words, if I really, really, really want to become a juror or some kind of person judging a case, I'm going to have to put in enough ANJ to where statistically I'm going to have a better chance of getting drafted in. So yeah, I buy myself into this system. And I find this kind of interesting because it's not really a trial by peers, it's a trial by who pays the most to become a juror in this system. So now that we have all the evidence, it's time for us to make some kind of judgment call as a juror, right? So who are we going to go for, Alice or Bob? Bob or Alice? Kind of hard to decide, right? <laughs> in this case, no. There could be some external data that we weren't given, but with the data we have provided in the dispute portal, it's pretty obvious in our view, and I think pretty much anybody's view, that Alice is the winner here. That Alice provided the evidence necessary to say, Bob, not yet. Cool your jets, bro. You're going to get your money. You're just going to have to wait for a little bit. So in the end of this case, let's say you and another juror both agree in Alice's favor. And one juror, for whatever reason, decides that Bob is the one that is actually correct. So now it's a two to one. Well, the way that the protocol works for Aragon Courts is, you guessed it, plurality wins. Now what's really interesting is they love that word plurality. And we're going to talk about that and why it's important. But for now, just know this. The winner is Alice because two people, two of the three jurors, voted in her favor. Now, is there an appeals process? Yes, there is. So if Bob decides, hey, I don't like this, and I think that this was unfair, maybe I should have actually put more evidence in or whatever, he can actually go through an appeals process. Now, Bob is going to pay for that. So yes, you can pay yourself for another trial. Kind of sounds like our court system sometimes, doesn't it, in certain ways. But regardless, if Bob wanted to, if he disagreed with the outcome, he could pay with his own ANJ that's staked to say, I want another trial, in which case additional peers in the jury are brought in to help judge and vote. That kind of makes sense. But in our scenario, let's keep it really simple. Let's say Bob looks at the evidence. He's like, yeah, it's kind of all true and clear. And he decides he's not going to appeal. So Alice is one. Yay, you have now successfully navigated your very first Aragon Court trial or dispute. Great, right? Well, it is great, but what's in it for me, right? Why would I do it? So let's chat about that and see what we can actually get out of the whole thing. This is the key thing to remember. The way that Aragon Courts works is to the victor goes the spoils. And we mean that in every sense of the word. So Alice won the dispute. So she is now correct. But the two jurors that voted in Alice's favor because the plurality of the decision went to Alice, they are the winners. Now what happens to the losing juror? In this case, that losing juror loses all of the ANJ that he or she has staked when they voted for Bob. In other words, it truly pays, and you are incented, very heavily I might add, to judge correctly. Now what I think is so interesting about how that judge correctly works is this actually follows a shelling game, or what's called game theory, for those of you nerds like me that want to dive into this. And the idea behind the way the judgment is selected is it's not really all about judging who you think is morally or ethically right or wrong, like we might do in a criminal trial or some kind of trial in the court system. It's actually totally different. It's a judgment based on what do I think all of my peers are going to vote for. See, this is what the plurality is getting at that I mentioned earlier. As a juror, put yourself in the shoes of all the other jurors and say, I've got cryptocurrency at stake here. I don't want to be wrong because if I'm wrong, I'm going to lose all of the funds that I have and I'm going to basically throw money away. I don't want to do that. And so what you're asked to do is judge in the way that the rest of your peers would judge to protect the decision. Okay, so this is a really cool concept, right? I mean, this definitely fits into that category of innovative cryptocurrencies. No question about it. But does Aragon Court have some kind of roadblocks or challenges in front of it? Definitely it does. One that I can think of is randomness. Randomness is super critical to this process, from jury selection to ensuring that those who are uploading the disputes to go through. All of that really needs to be random just to make sure that you know a fair shake has gotten out of it. 
So Aragon Quartz does this in a way that I think is pretty wise. It actually uses future Ethereum block hashes to predict that randomness or to kind of guarantee that randomness. Now, I'm not going to go into the details in this video, but I will link in the bottom of the description the actual technical white paper if you want to read more about it and just get into the guts of how this whole thing works. Just suffice to say, I personally think they do a pretty good job ensuring randomness really as well as anybody could do. The second thing that they need, of course, is disputes. So we've got to get there. Now they have a process for this. They're walking through it right now. But I do think if this begins to take off, like I mentioned before, the Ebays of the world, the Fivers, the services, uh, those are all potential places. I could even think of Uber and Lyft. All of these kinds of things are places where a dispute handling process that's automated, that's fair, that's random, that's based on cryptocurrency does have a place in this world and really could take off. And the last challenge I can think of what happens if one group, let's say a criminal group, gets a hold of the vast majority of A and J? And let's say this thing is really taken off and a lot of platforms are using this for dispute resolution. Well, if they own all of the A and J, the chances of them selecting their own jurors and pumping a ton of A and J into the system over and over and over to guarantee that they and their group are always going to be the jurors, could they corrupt the voting system and just say, hey, we now are all involved in this particular dispute. We're going to vote the other way and we're going to make everybody mad. Well, of course that could happen. There are risks to that. Just like I talked about in the last video in Universal Basic Income Coin, where a federal government could take over the entire process of the income distribution, definitely there's some risk there. But I think that's, that's thought through the way Aragon Court works in terms of allowing for repeal votes and to walk this back. It, there are some things that they've got in place to protect against that. And I truly don't think that's much of a threat that should be worried about now or truly anytime soon. So Aragon Court is really coming along quite nicely. They're in the middle of a test bed stage right now. They're finishing up some test disputes to make sure all of this works. And then from there, it's just up to people like you and me to get the word out to say, hey, this is a really interesting dispute platform, getting those to use it. I think finding jurors is going to be the easiest part of the whole process. Finding people that will upload disputes is going to be the challenge. But I think if you can find partnerships with organizations that do deal with disputes often and buy into this concept, I think this could actually work as a pretty good solution. One thing I didn't cover that I thought would be interesting is how much does it cost to actually buy in? Is there a minimum amount that it takes of A and J to get into this system and become a juror? Well, as it turns out, yes, there is. The minimum amount of A and J it takes to become a juror is 10000 At the time of this video, it's just shy of $200. So think about that for a minute. To become a juror, it's going to take at least $200 at the minimum level, just to have a minimum chance of getting elected as a juror. Now, I know that sounds staggeringly high, but it does make sense. It's truly incenting people to say, I'm putting some money behind this to be a juror, and I really don't want to lose it. I don't want to be the troll <laughs> of the Aragon Court world. I really need to make sure I'm right, because if I'm incorrect and I vote against where my peers are voting, then I'm going to be in trouble because I've got a lot of money that I can lose. So I think all this does make a ton of sense. Now, would I invest in ANJ? Actually, yeah, I think I would. This is definitely one that gets Wes's sort of check and thumbs up. I would definitely follow this, definitely very interested, and I would love to try to become a juror. And one last thing, if you'd like to see me become a juror, put 10,000 or more ANJ into this, and show a video of what my life was like as a juror in the Aragon court system, I would love to do it. Here's my promise. If I can grow my subscriber account by 10,000 in the next two months, I will do it. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, mash it, smash it as much as you can, share this out to others. I would absolutely love to try that. I hope you've enjoyed this. Really excited to see what next week's innovative cryptocurrency is. Thanks.